Okay, so we're going to try and come up with now the Cartesian form of a line in three dimensions. And you're going to see why vectors are so much better than Cartesian form. Because in two dimensions, we have y equals mx plus c. Because the gradient is something that's really easily defined, isn't it? It's just the change in y over the change in x. But when you start talking about three dimensions, what on earth does gradient even mean? Because you might have two lines that, if it was a hill, it might be equally as difficult to walk up either of those hills. But one of them might be sloping off in that direction, and one might be sloping off in that direction. So how do we start measuring gradient in three dimensions? We just, yeah, how do you even define it? So this is where like vectors becomes much more useful for us. So we're going to try and see how, why this is the Cartesian form of a line. It's weird in, in three, three parts here. You actually have something equals something equals something else. So it's already a crappy equation because it's just not helpful for us. But I'm going to show you it because they love to like, ask you the question in Cartesian form, basically if you translate it into vector form and go from there. Okay, so this isn't a very useful form, but they often use it in questions. So we've been told if a1, a2, a3 is the vector a, which is the position on the line. And if the direction of the line is b1, b2, b3, and the equation of the line is r equals a plus lambda b, we get r equals a plus lambda b. We're going to try and derive this Cartesian form of the equation that we've got here, OK? So we get that r is equal to a1, a2, a3 plus lambda b1, lambda b2 plus lambda b3. And actually, the general point on the line is just x, y, z. So to make it become Cartesian, we force this r position into its x, y, and z coordinates. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to look at the i component. Then we'll look at the j component. Then we'll look at the k component. So the i component says that x is equal to a1 plus lambda b1. Obviously, the j component says y equals a2 plus lambda b2, and the k component says z equals a3 plus lambda b3. Now, if I make lambda the subject for all of them, that's the one thing they've all got in common. So if I make lambda the subject for this, I get x minus a1 over b1 <coughs> equals lambda. Similarly, y minus a2 over b2 equals lambda, and z minus a3 over b3 equals lambda. So they're all equal to each other. And sometimes you might see the formula written like this, that they're all equal to each other but they're all also equal to a particular constant as well. So sometimes you'll see the Cartesian equation of a line where you have these things is actually equal to a, a number, or they might say it's equal to lambda, but they put it in brackets because you don't have to have it there because it's true that these things are all equal, but it's actually equal to a particular parameter. Okay. So your skill that you need to be able to do is you need to look at a Cartesian equation and you need to extract the direction vector and you need to extract the position vector. Yes. So what you'll easily be able to spot is if you imagine that it's always equal to lambda, well, you can see that lambda is the thing that will be multiplied by b1, b2, b3. And so we know it's the direction because direction is the thing that's multiplied by the lambda. 
The only thing you need to be careful of is it's not these numbers, but it's, it's negative. They've been subtracted. So when you look at one in a second, we're going to have to extract it carefully so that it comes out right, okay? So we've just got a few examples on this next page. So we're going to do a Cartesian version of these. So my Cartesian version of this one that I've got here, well, I'm going to have my x minus 4 over minus 1 equals y minus 3 over 2 equals z plus 2 over 5. And you could say that that's equal to lambda. You don't have to, but you could do. So you wouldn't have to like show anything like the der derived thing? No, you, go, you, you will just have this as a standard thing. I believe this is in the formula book as well. They put the things in the formula book you don't really need. Like, this is easy, right? Then they don't put the things in the formula book, like the rotation around the y-axis with a theta and stuff. Like, it's just annoying the things they choose to give you and the things they choose not to. So who can tell me, oh, and that's one more thing I wanted to say. We don't normally do this, do we? No. But in Cartesian form of lines, we do do this because it makes it easy for us to see, oh, the direction is minus 1, 2, 5, and the point it goes through is 4, 3, minus 2. So we actually leave it like that. But they might present you one that said something like 4 minus x equals y minus 3 over 2 equals z plus 2 over 5. They might present it to you like that, in which case you know you need to manipulate it, so you actually then change it to that thing to find out what the direction is. So you may need to do some manipulation, but it's very rare. I haven't seen that happen before. OK, so what's the Cartesian? Who thinks they can tell me the Cartesian of this one? X minus 2, X minus two over, one. over 1. We still write over 1. It's stupid, but we do. and z over minus 2. We probably do not do the 0 there. And again, that's equal to lambda, but we don't have to write that one that we've got here. So we're now going to go from a traditional Cartesian equation that we've got, y equals mx plus c, and we're going to try and put that into vector equation. So we have y equals 3x plus 2. Given what we've just learned, any suggestions about how we might do this? We're going to manipulate it. What should we do to manipulate it? What looks kind of what looks different about what we've got versus what the standard form for an equation is? Divide by, divide by three. So if we divide by three, we get y divided by three equals uh, x over three, or x plus, and then two over three. In other words, that's completely ridiculous. What am I doing? Yeah, so we get it like this, which we know is the same as it being divided by 1. So the vector equation of the line, well, what's the a that we have here? Zero. Careful, which one comes first? Uh, well, I mean the, x. the x bit. So what's the a from this bit? It's minus 2 over 3. Oh, yeah. What's the a from this bit? Zero. zero. Plus lambda. Zero, zero. And then we get 1, 3. Now, there's obviously different ways you could have written this. So I'm just going to quickly explore a different way. First, actually, before we explore that different way, this 1, 3, how can we interpret that as, as the gradient? For every time x goes up by 1. For every time x goes up by 1, y goes up by, goes up by 3. That's the gradient of 3, OK? This, though, is kind of weird. What's the coordinate? What's this coordinate here? Minus 2 over 3 and 0. So it's actually saying it's got a gradient of 3 and it crosses at minus 2 over 3. 
So that is true, that's the equation of the line, but we don't normally say the x-intercept, we normally say the y-intercept. Can anybody think what we could have done here first that might have given us that? Yeah, sort of make x the subject. So you don't need to write this one down unless, unless you want to. I'm going to see if I can squeeze it in. Let's put it in here. So we would have y minus 2 over 3 equals x. And then you'll have r equals, well, the value of a here is 0, 2 plus lambda. Well, that's over 1, isn't it? 1, 3. For the bottom, it's just the, it's the same. If you look at what we said here, b1, b2, b3, b1, b2, b3, it's because these are being subtracted that we do the opposite of them, OK? So it's kind of cool that you can see that that's what the Cartesian and the vector equation of them are linked to each other um, as just an example there. So let's just go for a nice easy one here. We're going to find the vector form of the equation of this line. So um, Ishak, do you think you can see what the a values are for this one? So it's what? Uh, two yep. minus five, zero. Two minus five, zero. And the B values? Three, one, four. Three, one, four. And remember, if we wanted to put that into this form, we could, if we wanted to, minus five plus lambda and four lambda. So some of the challenges you might be given is you may be given this, and then I'll say put it in Cartesian form. OK, so it's just added that in as something extra that you're going to need to be able to do. So that ends us quite nicely for this part of the lesson here. Um, mm -mm -mm, what was I going to say? So I'm going to add these to your homework, right? If um, one of the direction components was a zero, what do you think you would do to put it in Cartesian? Because you'd be having divide by zero. Because you can't do divide by zero. You just wouldn't have that component. Just like here, we don't have the z part. We just don't even have an equals z over zero. That would be crazy, right? Well, but what if there was like the direction of the vector was it would there still be a z for it? Well actually if it didn't have a direction for the z bit. I actually don't know how you would do that because it's still, if this was a zero, but it's going through minus two in Z, I actually don't know how you'd say that. Because you're trying to show that the direction is not changing in that way, but that it's going through minus two. I don't know how you'd do that. So they Cartesian give, is... Unless they give you a point. Like, this is a point what's yeah. So Cartesian is not very good because if you try and do any maths with like this thing that you've got here, it's just not as easy because you're having to do an equation with those two or those two or those two or these two. There's just loads of different things. But for vectors, look, one simple thing for three dimensions. This is the whole point of vectors and matrices. They make complicated life very, very simple. OK, so I shall combine all of those homework questions together. And then what we'll do next, I'll just give you a bit of a preview of what we do. We do a bit more problem solving. Then we start looking at equations of planes which is kind of fun. And we do more equations of planes in Cartesian form. And then we do dot products. It's a really thick booklet. It goes on and on and on. More, more planes. And then we do the complicated stuff, which is very interesting. I think you'll like it. Remember this? Yeah. And then we do shortest distances and all that.